What's going on everybody? It's C4 here and welcome to the newest episode of the Realistic Rebuilds and this has been the most requested team. It really feels like the entirety of Madden 18. They were one of the most requested teams in Madden 17 and I said that I was going to do them real real late and then I ended up winning the Super Bowl in the first year so there's no point making a video because you didn't need to rebuild them. This year however, this is going to be I think one of the toughest rebuilds that we're going to have at all all year i mean we we're coming off a win last week with the new orleans saints rebuild with lamar jackson finally winning the super bowl after a bunch of rebuilds that we failed and then we followed up with debatably the hardest rebuild with the oldest team so basically the key in a rebuild is you ideally want like five key players at least on the team that you can build around and don't have to worry about and then you know you replace your old guys everyone's old we have, like, a okay, Carson Palmer, we need a QB. No one on this team is going to be the QB of the future. We have David Johnson. That is player one. Oh, nice to have Adrian Peterson. He's only 32. Uh, wide receiver. Not the age. You need 26. they got to be 26 or younger. 27 is fringe. There's a 50-50% chance they won't work. So Larry Fitzgerald, he, you know, I'm gonna, he's going to be good, but he's going to retire soon. John Brown's 27. Jerron Brown, 27. Ah, oh, not good ages. Looking at tight end, we need a new tight end. Phenomenal. We need a new left tackle. Like everyone on the offensive line, a potty, 30, 31, 24, but he's not good. We have a right tackle here in DJ Humphreys from Florida. He's 23, 79. So that's two. We have David Johnson and DJ Humphreys, potentially John Brown, but probably not. So we're, we're going to count that as two guys. Look at the defense, Kim Dietschy, maybe if he can develop into something. Normal dev trade, I was kind of worried he might actually have slow. So that, we'll say three. No, no. Maybe, maybe four. That's like a small four. We have Hassan Riddick here, who I think we probably should move. Eh, you know what? For the sake of this, we'll move into middle linebacker because they do run a three-four, and we want him to get uh, a bunch of snaps if possible. Um, now we have Dayon Buchanan, which is interesting because we all know the safety glitch if you move him back to safety, but we we don't have a good starting middle linebacker. Outside of that, I mean, the only thing we could do here is, you know, we'll just look through the rest of the team. Chandler Jones, he's 27. He's a good player, but he's at that fringe age. I don't know how well he's going to regress. Patrick Peterson, 27. Big surprise. Um, Honey Badger. There's, there's a for sure four right there. Honey Badger, 25. He's an 83. But look at this. Tyvon Branch, in what world is he an 89? These are the, ba these are the current updated rosters. He's an 89. Here's what we're going to do. We need to get some draft picks. We are going to have to do our best to unload some of these guys for whatever we can get. Because we're going to need to have, you know, beast draft class after beast draft class. And of course, look at that. You know, phenomenal that our young players are already at positions not of need. So, um, we're going to try some things here. And we're, okay, we're going to see what we can move on from. Because there's a chance we might have to move Honey Badger to cornerback. Because I know his rating shouldn't drop too much. Then we'll have Buda Baker start at free safety. Dayon Buchanan start at strong safety. And then middle linebacker will be Hassan Riddick to try to develop him into something. I think that's our approach because we have to have something crazy. We have to just completely shift things around or else we're, there, we're never going to gain any traction in this rebuild. So we're going to see if we can get anything for these two old safety. I mean, hopefully we can get something good for Tyvon Branch. In what world he's in 89? I do not know. Uh, but yeah, we'll pop back after and see what trade offers come in. And then we will start to uh, mess around with some of the positions and on the depth chart. All right, so we threw up 89 overall Tyvon Branch. And I remind you that he's an 89. When we see some of these first round picks, we need to go. We need a first round pick. We need to be able to reload here. And the only team that I mean, the Broncos probably wouldn't realistically ever trade like Tyvon Branch. If there's an 89. Let's let's remove that it's Tyvon Branch. If there's an 89 safety that was 30, it have to be a team that consistently picks bottom six seven picks and and is willing to move on picks so that is he's we're sending him to new england that is a that is an un ideal trade for the patriots personally an 89 safety that's 30 probably would fetch you know a second in a you know safety is a, is a weird position you could play to you look at mike adams and stuff like that playing at a high level with the colts there's not a whole ways to justify it but we need this to happen we need this to happen to make some picks and thank you, Bill Belichick. Bill, Bel this be one of those moves that everyone's like, Bill Belichick just traded a first round pick for a, for an old ass safety, and they go, hell yeah, he just did because he needs to win. While Tom Brady is his QB, he knows Brady only has one year or so. It looks like we're not getting any flyers here. 
on Antoine Bethay, which is not great. Um, so that being said, we now have a little bit more clarity. So what we're gonna do first and foremost is we're gonna move Dion Buchanan back to strong safety. I think I don't know what his rate. I know we're in like the old Maddens. He would shoot up. We'll just keep him as a zone, I suppose. He can shoot up into the high 80s. He's an 85. So there we go. And then we're going to take Mr. Honey Badger and see how big of a hit he takes moving a corner. If it's too big, he's an 83. If he's anything below the 80s, I don't think we can keep him. Keep him there. He'll be better for us as a safety. He's a... Ah! I don't know. I think uh, I think that's what we're going to have to do because we need to get... We just have to spread out our assets. We have players that can play multiple positions. We need to spread them out. Uh, so we'll have Buda Baker start here. And then Honey Badger... I mean, he can still develop. Let's be honest. He's that superstar dev trade. He's 25. There's a good chance we could still make him into a high 80s corner, which is exactly what we need. And now Hassan Riddick will be our starter at middle linebacker. That way they were gambling on our young guys to put them in the best position to gain a bunch of XP and develop into something good. And then uh, now we have an extra first round pick to try to reload in next year's draft, not for the 2018 draft. So I'm feeling all right. So let's pop into the, uh, the regular season here and see what we can do. We'll stop at the halfway point. If there's any contract extensions we need to talk about. And then if not, we'll go right into the offseason, maybe postseason, with this Cardinals team. All right, so here we are at contract negotiation time. Looks like Larry Fitzgerald sure wasn't played for another two years. I assume we might get one. We're going to have to try to bring him back. Um, and I think we'll let everyone else. I mean, John Brown's the only other interesting one. But usually yeah, there, there might be a better free agency option at wide receiver. So I think it'll be better to hit John Brown hit because he's still going to sign for, like, if he hits open market, he's still going to be roughly the same price. This one here. Is more so, I, I don't know if I can let Larry go. Uh, so he wants, we'll bump him up plus. We'll give him the plus two treatment. If not, we might have to let him hit free agency and try to bring him. He, he wants more. There's no way how Larry Fitzgerald is getting 10 mil a year over two seasons. I'm sorry. I want to bring him back. I respect he's a legend, but that is just, he's being a hard ass. I'll tell you what, we will try it. We'll make a bid and play for him once the open market hits. But I can't go 20 mil. We could probably get him for cheaper. All right, so here we are at season's end, and we have a wild card berth, 10 and 6 for the Cardinals. This old ass team still getting it done. Going up against the 7 7 and 2 Packers. What is that about? I don't know, but look at that. Runners up in the NFC West. Looking at the stats here Carson Palmer, not a bad year. 4,100 passing yards, 32 TDs, 10 picks. As far as running is concerned, 1,200 yards, 16 TDs for. In my opinion, maybe the best player in the NFL in David Johnson. He's going to be key for this rebuild. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, 77 catches, 1,200 yards, and 11 TDs. Again, really do want to bring him back. Hopefully we can once he hits free agency. Uh, John Brown at 8 TDs, 700 yards as well. Sorry, that not a whole lot. Uh, offensive line is concerned. Really just looking at Humphreys, 12 sacks is not great. As he's probably the only guy we're going to try to build around on that O-line. Uh, as far as defense is concerned, our rookie Hassan Riddick, 143 tackles. Love to see that. 107 for Chandler Jones. 104 for Dayon Buchanan. We've switched to the safety role. For sacks, we got 12.5 for Rossi Rucker. 11 Kim Dietschy, which is good to see. 10.5 for Marcus Golden. Only 5 for Chandler Jones. So that's uh, underwhelming for him. 6 picks, Pat Pete. 5 for Dayon Buchanan. 2 for Honey Badger. And 1 for Hassan Riddick and Bethel. So that's good to see that our young players, our core group of guys, on defense are performing as well as obviously Patrick Peterson quickly look at the yearly awards MVP went to Tom Brady no love for anyone here on the Arizona Cardinals offensive player of the year we got Carson Palmer coming in at number seven defensive player of the year Hassan Riddick as a rookie coming in at number four offensive rookie of the year we had no one defensive rookie of the year Hassan Riddick lost out to Jared Davis and Ruben Foster at the linebacker spot uh, still a good, you know, going the right direction. And Buda Baker here, number nine. Best QB, Carson Palmer at six. Best running back, David Johnson at three. For best wide receiver, Larry Legend at number four. Uh, for offensive line, we didn't have anyone. Defensive line, didn't have anyone. Linebacker, Golden here at number nine. For some reason, Hassan Riddick didn't make it. For a defensive back, Patrick Peterson at five. Deion Buchanan at six. All in all, pretty good year for the Cardinals because it's the first year in a rebuild. We're just straight up going to sim. Nothing too, too fancy. Let's just go and we'll take a quick look at the box score if we're able to win. And unfortunately, we're defeated by the Packers by a score of 49 
to 19. Coming up incredibly flat here. Oh, let's look at this. Wild card round. Oh, God. What happened? Did Aaron Rodgers happen? Four TDs for Aaron Rodgers. Not a great day for Carson Palmer. Uh, run the ball. Ty Montgomery had three touchdowns. Could not establish to run it all for David Johnson. No one on our team had a big game. What about defense? Son Riddick, 14 tackles and a sack. Two and a half sacks for Nick Perry. You got Patrick Pearson trying his hardest. But all in all, I, I think it's fair to say that Carson Palmer is not a playoff quarterback. And I hope to God he retires. I don't really have a, a, a good line on a QB for us to draft. Uh, but we might have to look elsewhere. So uh, let's pop into the offseason, see what happens in free agency, try to bring back Larry Fitzgerald, and then get ready for the year one draft. All right, so here we are in the free agency period. We have quite a few bucks. I did the honest thing. I tried to go in for Larry. We offered him $20 million. There is no way in hell in real, in real life that Larry Fitzgerald will get more than $10 million per year, let alone return for two years. And then look, I have no idea. With $20 million, 10 mil per year, what the Redskins are offering to be that far ahead. But we simply cannot bid there. Uh, we tried to get Telvin Smith. He'd be an interesting guy to move in to middle linebacker. 20, uh, 27 years old, 86. Again, Dolphins just paying out the ass to get him. So unfortunately, that's not looking realistic. However, Austin Severe Jenkins, I did not know he was an 85 overall. He's 25. We need to get younger at the tight end spot. Uh, so that we're, we're leading better for him. He would be a big time acquisition uh, Dom easily Florida Gator moving him to defensive end. That'd be good We're going in for Zach Gore here middle linebacker coming out of retirement Cody Parkey as a kicker and then depth there at the linebacker spot really I'd be happy if we can land Realistically Safarian Jenkins and you know, maybe easily that'd be some plugging some holes in so you don't have to just straight up Go crazy in the draft this year and hit on all of our picks um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go to the draft, see what happens, and then we'll recap everything once we're done. Alright, so here we are looking at our draft class. You know, not the best. I really want to hope to try to get other positions of need. More so, um, the quarterback spot would have been a good one. But, you know, we got what we needed. In the first round of pick 24, we got Orlando Brown, the tackle from Oklahoma. 79 overall with a quick dev trait, that 93 strength. He put up 41 on the bench press, so you better believe he is going to be protecting our blind side as we do need to build up this offensive line. In the second round, we get an absolute stud. Was rejected to go in the fifth, but he ticked off every box. So we selected James Washington from Oklahoma State. 80 overall with a quick dev trade. Sucks. He's going to have to help fill the shoes of Larry Fitzgerald no longer being here. But, uh, you know, he's going to get plenty of looks. He's going to be our number one target, you would assume, for Carson Palmer. Uh, we got 70 overall safety here in the third round. We got a 77 overall guard. So we made him Coleman Shelton from Washington, a center guard, a hybrid type, quick dev trade. Got to start at right guard. But, you know, this draft here, we got two, you could assume, future starters on the offensive line as well as a new starting wide receiver. It's not so bad. We got a 70 overall D tackle and then an absolute flyer that turned out to be just trash here in the seventh round. But uh, we have a work cut out for us. I think this is going to be a really... Oh, I'm going to say that I'm going to lie. This, this year, too, is going to be a throwaway season until we have next year's free agency period and a big draft with multiple first-round picks and uh, a couple more assets, if you will. So, All right, so as we enter year two, team is definitely worse off. We just had to scan the wire to see what players were cut, what players stayed, and we have a bunch of rookies that we just threw little flyers on. So, luckily enough, actually, I, was, I didn't know I'd be saying this. Carson Palmer has not retired, so at least we have one more year to wait out and find a QB. Um, you know, I was thinking about maybe trying Jimmy Garoppolo, but ideally I want to try to build through the draft there. We're able to bring in Marlon Mack. AP's hanging on for a year, but Marlon Mack might be the future there. He got released, so we grabbed him off waivers. Wide receivers were looking real weak. So, we have James Washington. Outside of that, we have J.J. Nelson, uh, Julius Mitchell, who were able to grab off the wire. Uh, Chad Williams and this guy that we picked in the seventh round. Uh, tight end, we announced Safarian Jenkins. We moved on from Jermaine Gresham to free up some cat space, but we're able to get this free agent off the uh, practice squad, I believe, of the Bears. Darrell Rock, 74 overall rookie. Uh, I will absolutely take that. Uh, offensive line, we got Orlando Brown, Michael Potty. Center, we might actually go with this young center that we grabbed off the wire, Quinn Gildley. I don't know yet. We'll wait and see. Uh, we got Coleman Shelton will be starting. DJ Humphreys defensive line stays pretty much the same. We had to bring in Willie Henry as a free agent to have him start. That's never ideal. We got this guy here, 
Harry McMahon, son of Vince McMahon. We got him off the waiver wire. Uh, we got a starting D tackle that we're able to grab off the wire. Morel Bartu from USC, 72 overall. Oh, my God. Uh, Marcus Golden, hey, Hassan Riddick, Zachary Orr, Chandler Jones. We got actually Duke Riley here. He's not a, really out of position, but a uh, young player from the Falcons. Uh, we got two corners that we found off the wire. Uh, Buda Baker starting at St. I mean, it's going to be a rough one. It's, it's going to be a rough one. Let's just get through this year. All right, so here we are at the free agency period or negotiation time of year two. David Johnson all in. We have to get him. We're going to bring him back. Franchise tag if we need to. Buchanan we need back, Golden we need back, outside of that, uh, maybe J.J. Nelson we can't, you know, we did a terrible job of retaining our own, the fact that we had to grab so many guys off the wire, uh, but these three guys here are very, very crucial for the remainder of the rebuild. Alright, so looking at the end of the year, of course we weren't going to make the playoffs, this team is horrendous. Uh, we finished with a 5-11, a and 11. that's not that horrendous, I thought it was going to be way worse than that. As far as the contracts are concerned, we got David Johnson back, we got Golden back, and we're going to have to franchise tag Dion Buchanan. Uh, Palmer on the year, 30, 100 passing yards, 19 TDs, 10 picks. I mean, good, you know, judging by what we had to work with. 1,300 yards, 13 TDs for David Johnson, 11 touchdowns for AP. Receiving, J.J. Nelson, 77 catches, 700 yards, 3 TDs. Washington, our rookie that had to start, 68, 92. No touchdowns. It kind of sucks. Mitchell, our waiver wire pickup, 900 yards and seven touchdowns. So wait, we might have something there. Uh, Safarian Jacobs, our only big free agency signing, didn't really do a whole lot. Uh, as far as defense is concerned, 142 tackles for Riddick, 106 for Chandler Jones. We got five and a half sacks for Kim Dici, five for Jones, four for Riddick. And on the sacks front, or interception, sorry, four for Honey Badger, four for Pat Pete. So that is at least working our cornerback duo. Uh, which is nice. Um, we're not even going to bother really to look through all the awards, I don't think. I mean, well, yearly MVP went to Stafford. Um, NFC, we'll just quickly see if any Cardinals made the list. Defensive Player of the Year, nope. Offensive Rookie of the Year, James Washington coming in at number five. Okay. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Bertu coming in at number seven. QB, nothing. Running back, maybe David Johnson coming in at number six. Wide receiver, we're going to have nothing. Offensive line, we'll have nothing. Defensive line, maybe. Nope. Linebacker, nope. DB. Honey Badger coming in at number 10. So not the best of years for the Arizona Cardinals, but we just need to get through this year. Power through and get into the offseason. All right, so here we are at our free agency bidding period. We're just going from the depth all the way up to the top. So we got TJ Green for depth. Golson and Patterson both were on our roster. We're going to try to bring them back on cheap ass deals to be the depth for Patrick Peterson and Honey Badger. We got a punter. We got Andrew Billings to come in potentially to start at defensive tackle. We have Scarlett here as depth behind Chandler Jones. Taco Charlton could very well be our starting defensive end. Nelly Aguilar, you know, I feel like, you know, obviously I kind of didn't really play on of how well he's playing in real life in the Philadelphia Eagles connected franchise mode. So we'll see what we can do here. If he can be a wide receiver two, maybe three for the entirety. He's still 26, still could develop into an 80. And then stay on the Eagles train, trying to bring in a Jordan Hicks, along with Hassan Riddick, would be two great linebackers to have in the middle of our 3-4 defense. Um, didn't make really a whole lot of signs last year. We have a bunch of picks. The draft is the big focus, but if we can land Jordan Hicks, Taco Charlton, and the likes... It's going to be a good start to our free agency period. All right, so this was our big money draft class, and we did very, very well. In the first round with the fifth overall pick, we selected Ed Oliver from Houston. A lot of people thought we'd pass on him because he's a D-tackle, but at 6'3", 290, he is perfect for a 3-4 defensive end to pair there with Robert Kimdichi. Quick dev trade in real life, Ed Oliver probably would have the superstar but with the, how I expect him to play, maybe we'll unlock that superstar sooner than later. Uh, then in the other first round, we got Jared Stindham, the quarterback from Auburn, 78 overall, with a quick dev trait. I wouldn't be surprised if he was the highest overall QB in this year's class. There's no 87s or anything crazy like that. And really, this draft class, the 2019 draft class, the quarterback spot's not going to be so hot. I was really like kind of pressed. I was going to make it Will Greer, but Will Greer, there's no way hell Will Greer is going in the first round. Uh, you got Jason, um, Jacob Eason from uh, from Georgia, but now there's Fromm there, so that's kind of hurting his development. Shea Patch, there's not a lot of big QBs, and there very well could be Jared Stinnett from Auburn. The Baylor transfer could end up being the top QB of this draft class. 
So we decided to go with him. Uh, then the second round, we got Iman Richards from Miami. 81 overall with that superstar dev trait. We have hit back-to-back -back on wide receivers. Last year, James Washington. This year, Iman Richards, who maybe is one of the best young uh, wide receivers in college football. I get a 71 linebacker here in the third round. In the fourth round, we get a 78 overall monster, which we made to Colin Johnson from the University of Texas. Only normal dev trait, but 78 overall, kind of making us, you know, look, think back in hindsight about that Nelson Aguilar signing. Aguilar's probably not going to get a whole lot of touches anymore, which is a little unfortunate. But at 6'6", got the 94 acceleration built kind of like DGB. Uh, then the fifth round, we got Alec Eberle, the center from Florida. We needed a center, so we modified him into a real center prospect with quick dev trait, 76 overall, uh, expecting some meaningful minutes. We got a 70 D tackle, a 70 defensive end, and a 72 wide receiver here in the uh, seventh round to round out a very, very solid draft class, which will probably define how this rebuild will finish out. But that being said, now it's time to bop into year number three. All right, so here we go as we enter gear number three. This team is finally starting to take shape under my own vision. The offensive line, we got Orlando Brown, 82. Everly now 76, and Potty 79. Shelton, 80, and Humphreys, 81. So it's definitely an offensive line that's on the up. So Farron Jenkins, there's 86 as a tight end. Stidham will be starting, 78 overall QB. Helps to have David Johnson. Helps to have actually, you know, a, a young up-and-coming wide receiver core. They're all going to grow together. Richards in 82. Johnson 70. Uh, James Washington 82. And Aguilar there with a 79 on the defense. Secondary is, is a work in progress. Buda Baker up to a 77 overall. Deion Buchanan's an 88. Honey Badger in 83. And Pat Pete is a 90. The front three is, again, young and up-and-coming. Edge Oliver, 82. Billing, 75. Kim Dietschy, an 80. And the linebacking core is fairly solid with Chandler Jones and Marcus Golden, 87 and 85, respectively, with Riddick and Orr in the middle. Still a work in progress, but I'm expecting much more than five wins for this team. And, yeah, I'm not going to say playoffs, but I think we're going to build something so that year four will be a very nice year for the Cardinals. So we'll go to the midseason point, see if there's any contracts we need to talk about. And if not, we'll go right to the offseason. Here we are at contract time once again. Hopefully, Dion Buchanan won't make us use the franchise tag. We need to lock in Humphreys. We need to lock in Kim Dietschy. But as far as that, the, you know, everything else is gone. So we should have a decent amount of cash to use in free agency this coming season. All right, so here we are at the end of year number three. And you can tell we didn't make the play. 7-9, though, with a brand new QB. Lots of change coming second in the NFC West. Could be a lot worse. Looking at the stats real quick. Stidham with just shy of 4,000 passing yards, 29 TDs. Oof. All right, the 23 picks is a little high, but we all saw what happened in the last review with the Saints. Lamar Jackson's picks were kind of high, and then they eventually went down. And he turned into an absolute stud. Uh, Lynn, as far as rushing is concerned, David Johnson continued to be a monster, 1,400 yards and 13 TDs. Our three young wide receivers are doing pretty damn well. 77 catches, 700 yards, and 7 TDs for the rookie Amon Richards. 957 and 7 for the rookie Colin Johnson. 932 and 4 from James Washington. So that is a good young core to have with our QB. As far as sacks is concerned, no sacks from the rookie Everlay. We got up 12 from Brown, 8 from Humphreys. All right, it's not too bad. As far as defense is concerned, 121 tackles. Dayon Buchanan, 121 for Asan Rinnick, 109 for Chandler Jones. To go on with nine and a half sacks, eight sacks for Kimdichi, six from Ed Oliver, as well as 12 tackles for loss. So a very acceptable season from him. Uh, for interceptions, we got four from Willis Patterson. Okay, maybe we'll have to make a little bit of a change back there in the secondary. Maybe Patterson can be our corner, and we can move Honey Badger back to safety. Three for Hassan Riddick, two for Baker, and one apiece for the guys there. Looking at the yearly awards, MVP went to Aaron Rodgers. Surprise, surprise. Uh, for NFC Offensive Player of the Year went to Aaron Rodgers. We'll just look for our Cardinals here. They show off at anywhere. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Hey, we got Jared Stindham coming in as the official winner. Colin Johnson at 7. Amon Richards at 8. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Ed Oliver coming in at number 4. Would like to see that to be a little bit higher. Um, hey, Stindham in his first year coming as the number 10 QB. David Johnson, the number 6 running back for wide receiver. We had no one. Offensive line. We had no one defensive line we had no one linebacking core riddick at number nine chandler jones at number 10 and for defensive back unfortunately we had nobody but a good season that we can look to build upon and really year four and year five i expect this cardinals team to be much more competitive um as far as the xp 
We got the superstar dev trait with Stindum. That's where I figured it would be best to help develop him because we really have a short window now of two years. And everyone else is looking pretty good. Washington up to an 85. Johnson, 81. Richards, 83. David Johnson's a 98. We got 85, 81, 85. And Humphreys is doing decent here as an 83. So our offensive line is just like that rebuilt. We decided to make Honey Badger a free safety, which he went up to a 90. And Patterson, who led the team in picks, went from a 73 all the way up to a 78, which is looking nice. So right now, looking at the draft, I mean, grabbing another linebacker would be nice. If we could find a stud D tackle, um, that would be also a decent option. Maybe, you know, we're not going to rule out trying to bring in another corner to come in and compete. Uh, maybe a left guard, because, you know, Ipati's pretty old. But other than that, this team is just, you know, it's a wait and see. we got to let them develop. So now let's pop into the offseason and set things up for you. All right, so look at the free agent period. We had $56 million to work with, which is more than enough room. So we're trying to make a big time splash. We're currently the leading uh, bid for DeForest Buckner, who would, you know, not really a nose tackle, but you know, the Mad Sid doesn't seem to affect too, too much into that. So he's 93, he's still the best option that we have at the D tackle spot. Uh, we're trying to bid on Keanu Neal just cause I just want to have the experiment. I'm going to make him a linebacker, the kind of inverse of Dayon Buchanan, just to, you know, just for shits and giggles. We have so much money that we're not going to spend over the next two years. Tunsil, we're trying to bid on him. I don't know if we'll get him because we currently only have a left tackle, but the idea would be to sign him and move him to left guard, and then we'll bring in the Savage God, a.k.a. Pink Slip, legend Tom Savage, to come in and be Stindum's backup. But, I mean, I'll be happy if we can just land Buckner, but we haven't had the best of luck with free agents. We missed out on Jordan Hicks last year. So, my, you know, I'm not uh, super high on being able to land all those guys. All right, and here's our draft class for the third season again one of the better rebuilds in terms of just prospects whenever the land so in the first round pick 13 we selected reggie walker a defensive end but we're gonna convert him to outside linebacker from kansas state 81 overall only a normal dev trade but the 81 overall i think he was number four in true talent which is a excellent pickup for us to add some competition there with marcus golden on the outside linebacker spot. In the second round, we got one of the best guards we've ever been able to pick. And that's Nate Herbig from Stanford. Gonna be a starter right away after uh, we'll slide him over to left guard where Mike Upati was. Only a normal dev trade, but the 80 overall is a tremendous starting point. Monster in the run to help out with David Johnson. Uh, we got a 78 overall center here for depth behind Alec Eberle, 76. I guess he has already. Hates being here at the confidence boost. Uh, in the fourth round, we got a stud at corner, and we made it Antoine Winfield Jr. Yes, the son of Antoine Winfield, former Viking. Pretty sure he was a Viking stud. 79 overall with a quick dev trait, a burner, one of the better corner picks we have ever had here in Madden 18. We got a 72 fullback, 74 guard, 75 defensive end in the seventh round. Saul Foley, the son of Mick Foley. Uh, that is where what we're sticking with it. I mean, that guy's actually a beast. 51 awareness. You bump that up. That guy's like almost in the 80s. All right, a stud pickup there. So really, really good draft class. On uh, free agency, we landed. Uh, we got um, Buckner, who's a 93 D tackle. We got Keanu Neal, and because Keanu Neal for some reason only is a 71 linebacker, that was a whole kind of thing. We're gonna keep Keanu Neal at safety where he's an 85, and we're gonna move Dayon Buchanan back to middle linebacker where I think he's an 82 or an 83 to pair him there uh, with um, Hassan Riddick. So that being said, guys, that's a get ready for year four. All right, so here we go. Let's get ready for year number four. Feeling good about the squad. The only thing that might hinder us is that we decide to go with the superstar dev trait uh, and not boosting Stindum probably up to like an 82, 83. We're going to see how that's going to work out. But everything else around him is a really, really a step up from what it was a year before. Johnson's a 98. Our wide receivers, 85, 83, and 81. Offensive line, all B grades. So, I mean, if we do have to take this to a fifth and final year, we're going to have a very good offensive line. So, Farian Jenkins, who's been kind of underperforming as an 86, it's more so probably helping out the sim grade. Uh, as far as defense is concerned, Honey Badger back to free safety where he's an 89. Chandler Jones, Riddick, Buchanan, and Golden as our linebackers. B's across the board. Keanu Neal, a nice free agent signings, a B-plus strong safety. We have Peterson and uh, Patterson. Patterson, who had four picks last year, starting as corner with Winfield Jr. being our nickel. And we have Kim Dietschy, 93 Buckner, our big getting free agency, and Ed Oliver here starting on the defensive front. All in all, very well could be a playoff squad here. So we'll pop to the midseason point, see if there's any contracts, and if not, hopefully to a postseason berth after week 17. 
All right, so at the midseason point, Pat Pete, we're going to need to retain him. We got one more year left in this rebuild, and I think he can still uh, produce. Riddick needs to come back. Patterson needs to come back. Buda Baker, on the other hand, 15 mil for a guy that's you know really a depth guy. Won't see the field much more than Honey Badger. You know, I think we're going to be able to save a couple bucks there. But Riddick, Patterson, and Peterson are the big three that I want to retain. All right, so here we go. We're at the end of year number four. And we're as year number one. We made the playoffs. We took on the Packers. Deja vu as the 10 and 6 Cardinals have to take on the 10 and 6 Packers. But we have to go to Lambeau. The uh, dome team playing outside in the cold. All right, well, you know what? We might be able to do something here. Uh, look at the team as a whole. First thing is first, we'll auto spend some of this team XP here real quick so we get a better view oh my god we got a couple 10k plus there so that should be plus twos plus threes across the board for a lot of our skill position players uh, we spent and got pretty much every coach package you would really want your players to get here uh so look at the team 10 and 6 so it looks like it's always gonna be really really tough to try to bump the seahawks here uh which is good to know uh whoa whoa okay <laughs> there you go Jared stayed him out of nowhere, 4,000 passing yards, 44 touchdowns, 12 picks, got sacked 24 times. That, that is astonishing. He might have won the MVP. Oh, it's got Deshaun Watson MVP. You know, if that doesn't win the MVP, okay, let's see. I know Deshaun, we have 44 and 12. What did Deshaun Watson do better than that? 46, of course, of course he would. Of course Deshaun Watson would put up 46 touchdowns. That would happen. All right, but still, you know, we can focus on our great year here from Jared Stindham. As far as running the ball concerned, 1,500 yards, 12 TDs from David Johnson. We got receiving, we got 70 catches, 975 yards, 11 TDs for James Washington, 806 for Amon Richards, 950 and 9 from Colin Johnson. So no 1,000 yard receiver. I don't think we've had a 1,000 yard receiver yet uh, since Leif Fitzgerald has gone. But look, we got four TDs to Ferry Jenkins, four David Johnson, seven from Aguilar. So Aguilar still somehow find a way to uh, get involved with this team. On defense, 137 tackles for Riddick, 109 Neal, 105 for Chandler Jones. We got 13 sacks for Chandler Jones, seven and a half for Kimdichie, seven for Buckner, four and a half for Ed Oliver. I'd like to see a little bit more production from him. Uh, for picks, five for Willis Patterson. This guy's been a monster. Four picks last year, led the team. Five picks this year, leading the team. Four for Pat Pete, three for Riddick, three for Neal, two for Honey Badger. Um, quickly looking at the MVP race, where I assume Stidham came number two. Sean Watson came number one, and Stidham all the way down here at four. Yes, I don't know. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I don't think I'm ever going to win the MVP. I don't know what it is. We don't have it in me. Offensive player of the year, Stidham coming in at number four. Uh, defensive player of the year we got Riddick at six Chandler Jones at seven for offensive rookie of the year uh, Curtis Griffin I think I don't even know what position that guy played offense was he might have tied I don't even know that must have been a UDFA because I don't think I saw I drafted a guy named that uh, defensive rookie of the year Winfield Jr. coming in at number five QB Stidham at number two running back David Johnson all the way down at six for wide receiver we got James Washington in at number five for offensive line, we didn't get a single damn guy. For defensive line, we didn't get anyone. For linebackers, Chandler Jones at number two, Riddick at number six. And for defensive back, we got Patterson at five and Pat Pete at number 10. So I'm, I'm fairly, I mean, outside of the MVP thing, I mean, the stats were better, but I mean, come on, we get it. When you get your own QB that you drafted in your building, throws up 44 touchdowns, you would hope, I think he had 46 combined with two rushing TDs. You'd hope he would be more in the MVP race in the number four spot. And how's he only an 81? I don't know that not, that superstar dev trait with 44 touchdowns, that makes no sense. We have the QB package with Bruce Arians. Okay, but hey, we got a playoff push here. Let's pop into this game. We're gonna pop a bear, just play the moments, step in if need be, and see if we can get a Super Bowl run. All right, so we're just gonna play the moment, step in when need be. Uh, if it does go to a fifth and final year, I think what I'm going to do, because this year's play the moments is so ridiculous, we're going to play offense, but that's only for the fifth year. This is year four. Hopefully, the Sim will uh, reward us here a little bit. Come on, we got 44 TDs with this QB. Of course, we're going to probably settle for nothing. Hey, 7 nothing. All right, cool. Cool. Come on, defense. Come on, Ed Oliver. Oh, we got an instant TD there. We hit them with a little bit of their own cheese. 14-14 tie ball game here. That's the end of the first half. It looks like the... Oh, there we go. It's just absolute shoot. No defense is being played. How is Matt Bryant still playing? He's like 97 years old. All right, here we are. Big field goal. We'll let the kicker come in. 
We're in the red zone. Should we go for it? Fourth and nine. Kick the field goal. Go for it. I feel like having played Madden all day, I think we're saying go for it here. With how this how this game is going, it feels like the first team that settles is gonna be the first team that loses. So we're gonna come in. We got we got you know, we can go that wide. Look at all these playmakers we have. Go. So it to Washington. We'll burn a timeout. What a play. What a play. Stand in the pocket, stand him here up on the four yard line. We're still gonna go for it. Feel, I, I do feel like we're going to have, like, whatever team settles, the first team to kick a field goal is going to be the first team to lose. So. Oh, no. Oh, no. Quickly, quickly. Quickly. Forgot we didn't have any timeouts. Quickly. Oh, you better get back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, let's go with zeros on the clock. Ice in the veins. We're able to kick to James Washington for the equalizer at halftime. Thank God they removed the missed extra point glitch. Come on, that's all the momentum this team needs. Oh, we, we're in the red zone. Hey, there we go. 28-21. Feeling decent here. No, not so much anymore. We're getting stalled too much. Big end of game drive. Look at that. Finally starting to utilize David Johnson. Oh, my God. Game's on the line. Make a big stop here. Defense needs your help. Third down. Oh, no. Come on. 38. All right. Let's see what we can do. See if we can put them into field goal range. This team, it's not their time yet. It is not their time. At least we invested well at wide receiver. We have four capable options at wide receiver to make some plays here. So let's hit them with some air raid. There goes Aguilar. Doesn't drop it. Very un-Nelson Aguilar-ish. We don't have any timeouts. Let's keep rocking and rolling here. Come on, keep, give me the same play again. Should have went no huddle. All right, waiting, wasting way too much time right now. Why are they just walking out there? I hate that shit, man. All right, let's go. Oh, come on. Oh, and he drops it. He had it in his hands and he dropped it. You have, you've got to catch that, man. We had it. That was the play right there. Washington had him beat, and he dropped it. All right. Let's try it one more time. I don't know how much juice we got here. What about the pocket. Oh, that's bad. Throwing across his body. We'll try to make a play. It's picked off. I mean, there's only how you can't drop the other pass. That's absolutely a heartbreaker. How do you not make? You gotta make that play, Washington. Young team. Stid him at a good game. But we, we did everything they could to win that in regulation. And he dropped it. All right, so let's pop into year five. So for the free agent period, as we get ready for year five, we don't need a whole lot. Dalvin Cook's there, Houston. We already got Houston in the last one. So what I decided to go is with Evan Ingram, just because Safarian Jenkins has not been producing whatsoever. And we went well and above the Dolphins, who were going all in. The Dolphins always seem to just pay an absurd amount of money for any player. But we should be able to land Ingram. And get ready for a hopefully very competitive and Super Bowl year five. So after missing out on Evan Ingram in free agency, because why not? We have the worst drive maybe we've had in any rebuild. Uh, the couple 70s, but outside of that, uh, I mean, a 72 here, slow dev, 72, normal dev. Just trying to fill in depth spots that we lost players in free agency. But after three, what was it, three to four really, really good drafts. Stinker, absolute stinker. Not starting year five out on the on the best of terms here. All right, so here we go. Year five. Here's our team. Stidham's an 83. David Johnson, 97. Wide receivers are a little bit better than they were a year past. Let's put Richards here. Washington is feeling down after dropping that pass in the uh, in the wild card round. Offensive line. We got an A. Like, you know, not as didn't develop as much as I would have expected, but still a very competitive offensive line. Various Jenkins needs to start doing something. Defense is starting to look old with Jones now to an 84, Peterson down to an 89. But I still feel confident this is a team that can have one more playoff run in them, which is why, you know, we're here in year number five. Set the goal. It's Super Bowl or bust time. All right, here we are at season's end. And finally, it's putting it all together. We got a bye. 
Very nice to see one player's regressed. Uh, you know, we're an old ass team. I'm fine with that. Let's see plus greens everywhere, which is nice as we finish the year 13 and 3. Finally ending the Seahawks reign here on the NFC West as they went 9 and 7. We might still might see them in the playoffs. Might, might, who knows? So Stindham, another beast year. 4,300 passing yards, 42 TDs, 15 picks. He's only 86. That makes no sense. We've had multiple, well, not multiple, but definitely a couple 90 overall drafted prospects, and they haven't put up nearly the stats that Stindham did, and he's only an 86. He's like 10 points below some of the other guys. Look at that. Since he's come to the league, back-to-back -back 40 bombs in the last two years. That's very, very good production. Uh, running the ball, 1,300 yards, 7 TDs from Johnson. This dude here, Randy. BK Randy with 13 TDs, vultured away. Washington, 99 yards, 1,000 yards, 8 TDs. Amon Richards, 1,100 yards, 14 touchdowns. Colin Johnson, 892 and 4. Severian Jenkins with 6 TDs. David Johnson with 5. Nelly Eggs with 3. As far as defense is concerned, 124 tackles from Riddick. He's been very, very good throughout this rebuild. Uh, we got 12 sacks, Chandler Jones, 12 Kim Dietschy, 7 for Ed Oliver, 6.5 for Reggie Walker, and 6 for Buckner. We also have five picks, Pat Pete giving us one final good year, and then a bunch of players with two picks on this roster. Looking at the yearly awards, MVP went to Le'Veon Bell Stidham. There's no way. We're I'm just never going to win the MVP. Unless my QB throws for 50 touchdowns, I don't, I don't think it's possible. Like, of course that would happen. Uh, it's starting to get a little frustrating. Uh, Stidham won Offensive Player of the Year, so that's nice to see. That's not what we want, though. Uh, Riddick at number three, Chandler Jones at number four, and Kim Dietschy at 10 for Defensive Player of the Year. Offensive Rookie of the Year, we had no one. Defensive Rookie of the Year, we had Stroud, Will Stroud, son of Marcus Stroud. Best QB went to Stidham. Best running back went to Freeman with David Johnson coming in at six. Best wide receiver, we got Amon Richards at number three. Best offensive lineman, Brown at three. Shelton at four. Alec Everle at seven. It's just, I has to be. Like, whatever teams make the playoffs are the guys that make the best offensive line. For D-line, Kim Dietschy came at number three. For linebacker, we got Chandler Jones at number two. And for defensive back, our boy Pat Pete coming in at number six. So, all in all, tremendous final season. When our back's against the wall, we succeed, even though, you know, we can't buy an MVP award. So, simulating who we are playing in the divisional round is the 8-8 eight and eight Giants. They don't have Eli Manning, so they don't have that confidence that they just need to squeak in the playoffs and anything can happen. But still, it's fifth and final year, so we're not going to just play the moments. We're going to control the offense and try to make this playoff push work. Oh my god, what a touchdown. Oh, it's not on the touchdown. How is that not a touchdown? But what a play. Look, that... We had James Washington out there last year. Couldn't make the play because we had the wrong dude. It was Amon Richards all day long who should have been that wide receiver once. So setting up first and goal. Oh, man, we definitely should be running this. Definitely should be running this. But we'll still throw it to David Johnson because he's a glorified wide receiver. Glorified, rightfully glorified. Glorified sounds like it's a negative. Dave Johnson's a beast as we go up 7-zip. All right. 7-3, we're on the 9-yard line, time to get David Johnson involved, get the ball into his hands, we'll hit him on the screen pass, ooh, that's a big matchup, I'm telling you right now, Landon Collins is a great player, but we're able to take advantage of it there, as David Johnson takes the screen in, as the Cardinals go up 14-3. Right, here we go, 5-yard line, almost the dagger, could potentially be considered the dagger, dagger, oh, stand up, come on, there we go, and he falls into the end zone. Continuing to ignore that we have David Johnson as a running back. Stidham takes it in. Go up 21-3. All right, we're first and goal on the six. Once again, Giants turn the ball over. We have an opportunity to pretty much sim out the second half. If we can get a touchdown here. So let's be... Who wants it? Oh, right there. Oh, there we go. Hey, Aguilar. There we go. I knew we'd get Nelson Aguilar involved in somehow, some way. Big time play. We should be able to sim it out now, I feel. The second half here. You never know, man. This is probably going to try the best to make it exciting and keep it close. There we go. 35-10. This is a whooping. Try just walk into the NFC Championship right now. I think we're going to have to play the Atlanta Falcons who beat the Packers. Thank God it's not another pack-up matchup. But there we go. 
Cardinals move past the Giants. Did a four TDs on the day. As the Falcons are up next. Let's go. Uh, we're popping in now. Second and 10. Already down 14. Um, you know. Again, feels scripted. Feels like there's certain teams in this that are really... Regardless of the difficulty. It seems like in the AFC, it's, it's for sure the Falcons and the Seahawks. Um... But yeah, we're moving right now. We're going to need to commit to the run. We're not throwing the ball particularly well. Not beating off coverage. Not being able to sustain our blocks. we got 6-6 Colin Johnson here. I'd like to see him make a play. we got the scramble. We're going to have the, again. God, man. Offensive line is non-existent. Can't move out the pocket. Credit to the Falcons, I suppose. We'll have to give credit where credit's due. We have to take any points. But in reality, if we want to have a chance to win this game, we have to get seven here. Because the way that the Falcons are moving the ball. There we go. Sacked again. Didn't have enough time to hit uh, our B route there. Okay. Um, terrible coverage. Let's just go four verticals. Why not? Why not? You know, what do you have to lose? Four verticals. All right. Anyone want this? Right in the middle in the double coverage. And it's probably, yeah, I was surprised it's not picked off. Uh, one of six for 24 yards. Uh, very, very realistic how everything is playing out. How, how my team's performing is very, very realistic. So we will take this field goal attempt here. And uh, we'll get some points on the board. Wrong re When does a 98 back take the wrong read? Like, how does that happen? All right, pick it up here. Third and eight. This is completely... Completely wonky. It's, it literally feels like their players are faster than mine, even though I have like 97 speed on the outside. And, and David Johnson on my last... I, I'm, I might even include it. David Johnson on the last play literally ran the wrong... Like, ran through the wrong hole. He ran through the wrong hole. We're going to the left side of the line, and for no apparent reason, he just cut to the right side. Um, so, yeah, you know, it wouldn't surprise me for how this Madden goes for there to be shenanigans, but uh, we'll kick the field goal here. And try to make it a one-score game if we can somehow get a stop on defense. All right, our defense was able to hold, so now we have a chance to get a touchdown and go for two to tie it up. We're on the 24-yard line. This is where our team has been falling apart. So let's fit it in there to be. Of course, it's under throw. Right, of course, actually, the corner that's dropping back into coverage makes the catch across his body to intercept it. Great play, Rondé Barber. All right, this is it. The final push. I, I just don't like how Madden, for some reason, when it, I don't know if it's the difficulty. Maybe I need to go play on a lesser difficulty. But it makes your good players, your elite players, feel really not elite. Like, let's take off with a scramble here. Like, David Johnson's a 99 right now. David Johnson has not played anywhere near. Like, he doesn't feel different than using, like, a 70 overall running back. And you really want, you know, in a video game, at least, your special players to feel special. And not one player on this team, this prolific offense feels special right now and it's just it's just robbing me of that enjoyment like i'm not gonna play with david johnson like when's another time i'm gonna play with the cardinals i don't think so i don't i can't think of another time so this is my chance to to really have fun with one of the best running backs in football one of the best running backs in this game and through the mechanics or whatever they're doing with madden it feels like there's a special slider for real tough games and i don't know man it's just not fun man i want david johnson to be wrecking these fools right now and he's stumbling behind the line of scrimmage with no pressure Oh, there we go. All right, we got the touchdown. Now it's time for the two-pointer. What do we do on the two-point conversion? Continue. Or actually, I guess we'll let them do it. Hey, the moment. I didn't mean to do that. All right, we have an opportunity. And Atlanta turned it over. So we only need a field goal to win. Let's see Let's see if we can get you guys to show you a little David Johnson here. Look at that, stumbling again. He's a 99. He's a 99 overall running back, bumbling around back there like Dre Archer. Like I'm trying to cheese the game or somehow and use an inferior back. Perfect example. I'm glad that happened. That's what I've been experiencing all day. I want David Johnson to be a game changer. Not a game changer like EA likes a game changer. Like just people that say, yes, this game's perfect and never fix anything. Not an EA game changer. I want him to be a Madden game changer like a, like a football player. Uh, I don't know why they're asking me to like throw it here. We're gonna run it. I'm pretty sure a field goal wins. They turned it over, right? Why would I do that? Let's see. Oh, come on, David. Come on, DJ. 
Like, David Johnson in real life would have finished that run. But, of course, now tackled short of the stick, short of the end zone. I'm just going to I'm just gonna keep feeding him. There's no way in hell anyone else is touching the ball, especially with how bad my QB's played. Finish this drive. Thank you. Thank you going to the Super Bowl. Very much. Still didn't make up for four quarters of David Johnson playing like a seven overall. But, hey, we're going to the Super Bowl. I think we're playing the Chargers, so we know what happens when you play the Chargers in a sim. So my butthole is already prepared. Um, Stidham, two, uh, 210 yards, one touchdown. Didn't do a whole lot. Had two picks. Amon Richards, though, eight catches for 132 yards. He gets the game ball as we get ready for the Super Bowl. All right, so in this Super Bowl against the Chargers, after a scoreless first half, this terrible uniform combination Cardinals, second and eight on the 12-yard line. We're going to try to make it the David Johnson show. Uh, Cardinals have a weak run defense, but now it's third and five, so we're going to have to throw the ball. We'll go level sail. It's one of the, one of the more successful plays in my wheelhouse. Keep an eye on David Johnson on the outside there. He gets covered fairly well, but B is wide open in the middle, and there we go. Amon Richards with the go-ahead touchdown. God, that's a hideous uniform. Is that like a glitch or something? Do they actually wear those? Someone asked Param Crow. What's going on there? Oh my God, let's go Safari Jenkins. Oh, what a play! Taking it almost 70, what that, 77 yards to the house after doing nothing. We see he was our big son in year one in the offseason. Done nothing, I don't think he's ever broke 700 yards or six TDs. There you go, his Super Bowl moment. Look at that, just out oh, wrong. Whoever 35 is, that guy there needs some speed training. All the way to the house, look at that. That 10-5, the touchdown right at the end of the first half after the Chargers couldn't capitalize on that forced fumble. Let's go. Oh my god, what was that? What was that? In what world does a 90 overall QB miss throw a wide open running back? That was, that might have been, that actually might, I've seen it every time I throw a pick, but that might have been the worst throw I've ever seen. No one even get a replay, that's how bad it was. Alright, here we go, first and 10 on the 22, after getting a field goal earlier to make it a 7 point ball game, we're trying our best to put this game out of reach. And there we have uh, Tanya Harding's son, Chanya Harding, getting a little scamper, loss of two. I don't know why David Johnson's not in. I don't think he's gassed or anything. Uh, maybe he's just uh, disappointed with how he, how he plays in Madden. Maybe that's why he's, his feelings are hurt. Second and 12 on the 24. Dropping back. Put the running back open. Does anyone else want this? All right, we'll eat the sack. They don't want to throw a pick. We'll eat the sack if we have to. A field goal is not the worst thing that could happen here by any means. So we'll just go with the wide receiver corner. I actually don't mind this play. Mm -hmm. Between the, that little spot back there, the safety's dropping off. We might be able to get Nelson Aguilar a catch here. He gets... Well, maybe. Throws it in. There we go, Nelly Eggs. Gain a 20. All right, our main receiver down. We're on the 23-yard line. We'll go Zona Shallow. I'm not a huge fan of this Arizona playbook, though. Maybe that's why I've been having some frustrating plays. We have Mitchell here. Freddie Mitchell's son, Teddy Mitchell. There's absolutely no pocket there, and we get sacked by Malik Jackson. I think that's Malik Jackson, anyway. Uh, let's, let's just start being a little cheesy. Let's turn two clock on. We'll run in here and get the fourth quarter started out. Nice little chew. Nice little shoot down here. I mean, there's nowhere to go there, but we went on the inside. Not rushing 55 yards for David Johnson. We probably could be using him a teeny bit more, but, you know, doesn't play like a 99. Third and goal on the nine. A touchdown probably would end this game. But just We'll eat the sack if we have to. We're not going to force it in. But there you go. James Washington making amends for last year's playoff. I don't even know what we call it. There would probably be a nickname if that was real life. We'll call it the drop. Gets the touchdown that go ahead and make this a 24 to 10 ball game. Maybe the dagger the Cardinals need to win Bill, not Bill O'Brien, Bruce Arians, a Super Bowl title. All right, we're gonna pop in here with the sim. 
Make things interesting. We're letting go of that. Go all the way down the field. 31-17. The Chargers fail. And that's the final score as we win back-to-back -back Super Bowl or bust. No, you are not seeing a dream. You're not watching another channel. We do it by the book here. And that's back-to-back -back Super Bowl wins. Last week it was the Saints. This week is the Cardinals. For everyone that's been chanting and ranting and raving since Madden 17, why don't I rebuild the Char Cardinals? This one is... For you, we're able to get it done. Big names here and there. James Washington, Jared Stidham, Ed Oliver, Colin Johnson, Amon Richards, Antoine Winfield Jr., Reggie Walker, Keon O'Neal, DeForest Buckner. On top of just great play from David Johnson, at least in the sim, not particularly when we played. Uh, we saw a big year from Larry Legend early on. Austin Safari Jenkins would play of the game for sure. Uh, defense, Hassan Riddick was a beast. Pat Pete, Honey Badger, all these guys performed fairly well. And for what was on paper going to be probably the most difficult rebuild that we've done, at least since you would figure. Like we did the Jets, Browns, and 49ers in the first three or four episodes. Uh, the toughest one since then, and we're able to do it. So we're on a two win streak. Very good to see that. As always, guys, leave a comment in the comment section below what team you want to see me rebuild next. I will try my best. To do the most popular request. If you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Check out my Patreon page. It's in the description below if you want to continue to support my channel further and get involved with the Portland Snowhawks Connected Franchise Mode series. Other than that, guys, it's C4 saying thank you for watching. And until next time, peace out.